Today I want to talk about the importance of drawing objects and furnishes to improve your overall work. Uh, you can definitely work on your perspective skills as well as improve your aesthetic, uh, aesthetic taste uh, through the study of values uh, and cross-hatching, uh, composition and materials and really uh, upgrade your perception of colors and reflections and all of that all the way to practicing your design skills with something that is simpler uh, but still difficult to some extent uh, we're going to look at some amazing examples here so let's jump right in uh, perspective i highly recommend using uh, both uh, andrew lumis and marcos mateo mestri's work uh, as a basis uh, lumis brings this structure of using primitive forms that is very useful if you've been following dynamic sketching tutorials from peter hahn or the foundation patreon and these guys you you might have seen that they use a lot of primitives uh, spheres cubes cylinders cones and pyramids to really break down complex structures in a more simplified way so we can tackle one step at a time uh, this is the same here and objects are going to be mostly like cylinders and cubes and and we can really simplify them easily that's why it's way simpler than going straight to drawing figures and characters and, and, and all of that, or even complex environments and architectures, vegetation, and all those organic shapes that are gonna be way harder to tackle. So starting here, understanding the fundamentals and going forward, uh, it's gonna be super useful. It's also great to understand perspective and perspective fundamentals. Uh, for example, how ellipses are gonna look in relation to the horizon line. We talked about this on my video about learning perspective through door, uh, drawing a door. Uh, so the rotation of the door, uh, it's simpler to see, especially because if we're sitting down at home, uh, normally the bottom side of the door will be under the horizon line and the top side will be over the horizon line. So the cylinder of the rotation is easy to grasp. This will happen as well if we're drawing, for example, a bottle of, uh, over a, a table or something like that and you're sitting down uh, or, or even uh, sitting somewhere closer to the ground, uh, the horizon line will probably go through uh, that shape and some of the ellipses are gonna be uh, curved upward uh, over the horizon so you, if we have a horizon here some ellipses here are gonna be curved upward and the other ones that are uh, below the horizon line are gonna be uh, drawn um, curved to, to the, the, the uh, lower side uh, so that's really important and, and this is a great example from the book. Uh, also, uh, objects tend to fit well inside boxes, uh, so it's a great way to practice your uh, X tool, uh, so dividing using diagonals, uh, so you can divide any box using a diagonal and you can find the middle point. Uh, I also talked about that on the, the, the video with the door. But this is a great example from Marcos Matteo Mestri, where he uses a lot of the X curves uh, here also to find midway in this side. And then uh, with the middle point found, find a quarter of uh, the measure. Uh, so he can really dive uh, deeper here into adding details using this kind of framework. Uh, for the vertical uh, division, uh, as we're talking about a two-point perspective situation, we can go uh, ahead and, and really divide it uh, normally uh, because this is a, a true vertical line. Uh, so we can really go there and put those proportions, but everything that is uh, uh, converging to a finishing point, the divisions are gonna be using the diagonals or other tools uh, for um, transferring points and all of that so this is great uh study there is also a tutorial by foundation uh, patreon talking about building um complex shapes with simple structure so i'll definitely add that to the description below uh and going ahead to the second point values and hatching sometimes uh we really uh don't give full uh consideration to rendering simple uh, objects. And these are some great examples by uh, Muha. 
uh, he has this series of uh, plates on, on drawing called documents, uh, decorative documents. Uh, I think that's the, the direct translation from, from French. Uh, so it, it, it's really interesting to go into this objects and really look at the hatching. The hatching is really beautiful. I don't have a lot of resolution here, uh, but the hatching is super beautiful. And it's a simple object that probably you have something similar to this on your kitchen or or uh, something like that. So definitely take a look and 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 try to translate some of that. The 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 real uh, intricate details. Uh, I love the hatching on this one. Uh, it's harder to see because of the resolution, but it's it's awesome this is super beautiful the design art nouveau and in influence design is amazing so there is a lot to learn from uh, decorative uh, elements from those objects uh, a lot of different patterns and and and, and shapes that we can definitely uh, use later on on our own designs here's some more examples pretty quickly so drawing simple forks knives and and spoons are gonna be awesome for training reflection and how to really guide the eye uh, the flow throughout the the, the readability uh, uh, and composition in simple shapes we're going to talk about complex compositions in a bit uh, but this will give you the basis for going forward in readability so these values here are, are, are strong anchor points so that the, the, the we can read uh, the the shape in a in a more uh, cadenced and, and, and structured way. Uh, this is all perception and not like rationalizing everything, uh, but it's something that is really interesting to practice. So just a few more examples and then we'll go to another person. So Mark Taro Holmes has a great book uh, on uh, urban sketching and this is one of the examples for simple drawings and simple simple hatching. I love the result and, and also, as I said before, the distribution uh, of values uh, and even grouping of some of those values and the details are really uh, loose uh, and just suggesting detail and not going down and detailing everything. It's not that you can't detail everything. Uh, I love this uh, example by uh, the Instagrammer Ann Jamie where we see a lot of intricate detail and once again ellipses uh, drawn uh, beautifully uh, even on a exploded view and in different angles uh, this is great practice for those that are struggling with uh, ellipses so getting the the object and putting it in different uh, directions and in different places looking uh, upward uh, looking downward on it uh, will really help you grasp ellipses in a different form and you can do that with like a simple water bottle or, or something like that it's it's good enough uh, especially if you have labels that you see the ellipses and, and it, it will be a, a great cue for that the next point I think it's one of the most important that I'm going to talk about here and it's composition. So I'm using here Andrew Lumi's uh, creative illustration. So you can really see the, the simplicity of the composition turned into something that we, is way more complex, but the underlying basis and structure really holds the piece together. So practicing this, uh, I've shared a, a great book on my uh, video on 50 books for self-taught artists uh, by Molly bank where she uses graphic design principles of geometry and the, their distribution to really uh, improve uh, the skills of composition and perception and storytelling through just simple shapes so this is the basic structure for this kind of compositions and and it can get way more complex uh, even this reminds me a lot of uh, Mondrian uh, so we can really understand how lines, spaces, in, in Mondrian's case, colors play a, a big part in guiding the eye and having a pleasing, uh, well-established and uh, balanced uh, structure. Another great example is Marcos Matteo Mestri here. I think this is from his book, uh, drawing uh, frame drawing techniques uh, but also as we saw just before a lot of lines 
that are giving the sense of perspective, but as well a composition uh, and circles. So it's a, a combination of simple shapes and lines to really have a, a pleasing aesthetic uh, and, and even distribution of the size of those shapes will be really important. This uh, being a contrast here, uh, just in the middle uh, to give a sense of uh, variety. Uh, Nathan Fox talks a, a lot about this on his courses on schoolism, having unity for the whole scene, but having a little bit of variety here and there to really help shape what we're trying to convey. Um, so this is really important, uh, getting stuff from your home and putting it together both to draw and to paint will go a long way into really uh, developing your composition and your aesthetic skills. Uh, the next natural step, once you have put all those items together, it's going into materials and colors. So understanding how light bounces, uh, color and light book is a great resource on that. I have videos on that topic here on the channel as well. Uh, you can really start understanding how light follows on form as well as reflections and different materials, how they react, reflected lights uh, and all of that. This is an amazing example. There's a YouTube video on this and uh, both uh, Robert Kondo and Dai Tsutsumi, they have a course on schoolism all on this. Uh, this is also a video on YouTube uh, by Dice uh, and Tonko House that is their studio talking really about simple materials. I've talked about this on my video on how to draw fish and finding beauty on uh, the ordinary. I, I really think that still lifes are an homage uh, to materials and uh, the relationship of shapes, colors, uh, and all of that. And we can go a, a really long way uh, drawing simple stuff as a glass of water, as we're seeing here on Chardon. Chardon is one of the biggest names in still life in art history. So a great reference to, to look like how to render copper uh, in uh, all different materials here, how to place the edge of the table. Uh, we're gonna see that again on David LaFell that is a uh, um, uh, painter that is alive nowadays. So a contemporary uh, painter, uh, figurative and also um, on a still life, uh, pr pretty heavy production. We're gonna see some of my work later on and I did some uh, studies of his work. Even the thumbnail for the video uh, is uh, around that. So definitely take your time. I don't know if this is Dice Tosumi or Robert Kondo, uh, but uh, another amazing, amazing uh, piece just looking at your living room. I'm gonna do another video, uh, probably if you're seeing this, it's gonna be on the channel about drawing around the house. So this is a great example where you combine a lot of different objects and furniture in one place and have a, a pleasing composition with great lighting uh, and all. It's great practice. Even simple stuff like where will you position the small uh, accents of value and uh, to, really convey reflections and even some aspects uh, of color. I love the use of those bluish greens uh, here and there to really give life to something that is simpler. Uh, so some color accents here and there. We can see also on uh, Chardon uh, a lot of uh, greens uh, with the reds giving a vibrant uh, feel, but also really uh, muted uh, to some extent so that it's not competing with the main uh, subject of the painting. So that's that's another level of discussion, really great stuff. We can also see the same here uh, on LaFell. Uh, so last but not least, also design and styling uh, or stylization. Uh, it, it's a great way to practice. We have examples here from Robert Kondo and Corey Loftis. Uh, both are great. Uh, Robert Kondo is a little more grounded on, uh, I don't know if some of those are from uh, observation as well, but really great way to convey uh, composition as well with simple objects and shapes uh, and furniture. Just some keys uh, will go a long way into creating something that is beautiful. Uh, I think this design is for Monsters uh, movies, so Monster University or uh, Monsters Inc. Uh, and, and 
a very busy uh, table, but super organized in terms of the readability, uh, just an elevator and, and so on. So it's great. And some other objects, I think for, for Monsters University, uh, again, so simple design from things that we have on our day to day. Uh, so notebooks, calendars, and, and just coffee cups uh, and all of that. You can go a long way in creating a, a pleasing aesthetic. So really dive deeper and look at that. Uh, and, and go in a little more uh, stylized here with Curry Lofties. Uh, those are amazing to really go crazy on the designs and getting something from your house uh, a lamp uh, a chair uh, and, and and really dive deep or a stereo uh, really dive, dive deeper into how can you push some of those shapes uh, even like more not very straight uh, some curved lines a bit so a great way to practice uh, and really sharpen your design skills with something that is in our day to day and can be a lot of inspiration for for this kind of work. So great stuff here. I love this fridge, very stylized. So this is awesome work. Uh, so that's pretty much it. We'll just take a quick look at some of the work that I did. I've, I haven't done a lot of this uh, recently. So this is old work, uh, some, of the, some of that almost 10 years old, uh, but it's a great practice that I, I sh definitely should get back to. So some drawing uh, works that I did while teaching perspective. Uh, so understanding the use of basic boxes and then growing that as we saw with Marcos Mateo Mestri uh, using uh, the, the X2 here uh, again uh, and finding the middle point and the middle point will give the guidance of the lock and also the details on the the, the ellipses uh, putting the ellipses here and understanding how they relate to perspective and and here also uh, ellipse practice so you can get some greek uh, greek uh, vase, uh, vases uh, and uh, as well as simple stuff, as I said before, just a bottle of water will go a long way in understanding where can we place some of those highlights to give re readability as well as darker values to give more of an anchor to, to the overall uh, reading. One uh, more philosophical point from this, uh, it, it's interesting to see that even something that is super simple as this uh, can go a long way in creating an emotion emotional connection. I talk a lot about this on the video of finding beauty on the ordinary, but the memories that come to my mind when I'm when I was drawing this and when I look to this artwork, it, it's amazing. I, I can remember the place where I was painting this, the, the moment in my life that I had at that moment. So a lot of uh, happy uh, feelings come from this, uh, a lot of great memories. It can relate to sad memories as well. Strong uh, feelings will come from the simple drawing. The urban sketching moment uh, movement is also uh, something really great. Uh, I go draw on the street sometimes and I'll, I'll definitely talk about that when we get into architecture and going outside. But you create emotional uh, connection with the subject and I think that's a big point. Also some Christmas stuff, uh, painting in watercolors as well. And some of these studies that I did digital painting uh, from uh, LaFell. Uh, this is great and, and, and goes down, it goes back to what I've said uh, on my videos on color and light, understanding uh, how light, uh, the subsurface, subsurface scattering, uh, reflection lights, uh, and, and even uh, the light going through, uh, transmitted light that we saw on, on James Gurney's book as well. It's it's great. It's great example. It's a lot of control and colors and composition and, and all of that. Uh, so definitely take a look at his work, uh, do some copies, uh, transfer that to your own designs and that will be a great practice. And my last one, last but not least, uh, this is a a practice I did uh, back in the day when a THU event in Portugal was uh, starting out and I wanted to s pay an homage to, to the event. So I did something uh, based on what I was studying here, trying to 
apply some of the knowledge acquired. Um, I like, I still like this piece. A lot of improvements would be needed, uh, knowing what I know nowadays. But definitely a great practice on ha getting what you learned and, and, and drawing something from imagination or uh, sometimes memory. Uh, the grapes, I think, were used some of the memory that I had from, from really studying uh, LaFell here. So that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this is a simple topic that can go a long way into helping you develop. So I think, uh, I hope this is in inspiring. Uh, and will help you uh, on your journey. If you enjoyed this video, you probably will enjoy my video on finding beauty on the ordinary. So I'll add that here. Uh, and I'll definitely hope to see you all in another video. Have a great one.